A recent study has involved almost 200 huge stars that are reaching the end of their lives. It has given scientists more precise information about how the sun will one day end. It turns out that the sun will be about 200 to 300 times bigger than it is now by the time its game is over. For starters, let's begin with some basic information about star sizes. Giant ones reach this stage because they've run out of nuclear fuel and are no longer burning hydrogen in their core. Eventually, the core gets hot enough to trigger the next stage of fusion, which is helium burning. All the stars that were surveyed in this new study were either in this hydrogen shell burning or helium core burning phase. Even though giant and supergiant stars only make up less than 5% of all stars, or at least that we know of, they're actually really visible from a distance because they're so bright. In fact, according to scientists, about a third of all the stars you can see outside on a dark moonless night are giant or supergiant stars. This study will eventually give astronomers really useful info about massive stars. They'll be able to figure out their size and temperature, no matter where they are or their evolutionary stage. This means they can see a star's true color and use that to find out its radius. Pretty cool, right? It does raise the question, what will our sun be like when it gets old and grumpy? To put it simply, it will expand when it starts burning its hydrogen shell, but then shrink a bit during its helium core burning phase. After a few hundred million years, it'll end up as a giant star, about two to three hundred times its current size. Eventually, the sun will expand so much that it will simply evaporate. So, what will happen after the sun fades away? Scientists actually have some predictions about what will go down, even though we won't be around to see it. They're pretty sure the sun will turn into a planetary nebula. These planetary nebulae are chunks of gas and dust in space that come from a star that is fading away. They got their name because they looked like planets to people using telescopes back in the 18th century, even though we now know they have nothing to do with actual planets. And here's the crazy thing. Astronomers have found out they can use the level of brightness of these planetary nebulae to calculate their distance from us. In 2018, scientists also found out that the sun is the smallest a star can be to still be able to produce a visible nebula any smaller and it would not be visible. Stars that are up to three times more massive than the sun will produce brighter nebulae. The sun is currently 4.6 billion years old, but it's estimated to have another 10 billion years until its end. The sun is also getting brighter with each year. It doesn't seem like a lot now, but it's actually going to cause some big problems for Earth. In about a billion years, the sun will be too bright for life on Earth to survive. Our oceans will evaporate, and it will be too hot for water to form again. So unless we find a way to escape from this planet, humanity only has about a billion years left. Will Earth still be around by the time the sun turns to dust? It's hard to know for sure the exact timeline. But even before that happens, Earth will most likely be scorched and lifeless, with no atmosphere or oceans left. It's not clear how close the sun's outer layers will get to Earth, but if they get too close, it could cause Earth to spiral into the sun and disappear altogether. Even if our planet does somehow manage to survive the sun's giant phase, it will be orbiting a hot white dwarf, or a star that has run out of its fuel. In that distant future, the sun will be barely larger than our planet. Eventually, the sun will cool and dim completely. It'll move to another stage called a black dwarf. It will cause Earth's orbit to loosen up and our planet will spiral into the faded sun. But interestingly, the sun doesn't get the final say in what happens to Earth. Gravity keeps planets in orbit, but it also attracts them to each other which can cause their orbits to flex and drift. This could lead to the solar system destabilizing and ejecting planets, including Earth. Basically, a lot might happen in the next 5 billion years before the sun becomes a red giant. 
There's also another scenario. While most stars stay far away from our solar system, there's a chance that one could come closer in the next billion years. Even a small star or black hole could mess up the orbit of our planet if it gets too close. But don't worry too much, the odds of that happening are low because of the amount of space between stars. Our Sun is a solitary star, so there's little to no chance we'll be able to catch a ride with another one nearby. However, many stars in our universe have companions. Among these stars is Castor, a stunning system that comprises six stars and is one of the brightest objects in the night sky. Although humans have been admiring Castor for ages, they were not aware of its true nature until the invention of telescopes and spectroscopes. Even with the help of a small telescope, it's evident that Castor is composed of two primary stars, Castor A and B A, that revolve around each other. These stars are larger than the Sun and need 467 years to complete one orbit. In total, Castor is composed of six different stars. The biggest one, called Castor AA, is roughly two times larger than the Sun, while the smallest has about 0.5 of the Sun's mass. If humans want to survive the next billions of years, we might need to set up camp somewhere else in the universe. It may seem like something out of a sci-fi movie, but it could be our reality one day. Thankfully, NASA is already looking at some options. They've discovered two new planets, TOI-700e and TOI-700d. That might be new hotspots for us humans. TOI-700e is the optimistic zone, which means it could have water and even an atmosphere. TOI-700d is in the conservative habitable zone. So, scientists aren't too sure about it yet, but hey, we'll take what we can get. But hold on. Before you start packing your bags, there's a little problem. How do we get there? It took John Glenn months of preparation just to circle Earth three times. So we might need to start working on our astronaut training. Well, at least we have some options for our future intergalactic vacation plans. Wouldn't it be nice if we could time travel so we could see what our solar system will look like in billions of years? An American physicist named Ron Mallet has proposed one interesting theory for time travel. It uses light, a resource that is abundant in the universe. His idea involves using a rotating cylinder of light, which could transport an object in both space and time, similar to how a bubble moves in a swirling liquid. Mallet suggests that a cylinder of the right shape could allow for travel to the past and the future. To test his theory, he has been trying to secure funding for an experiment. However, some scientists consider Mallet's theory to be impossible and unnecessary to test. We might also be able to travel through time if we move fast enough. According to Einstein, the way we experience time can change depending on how fast we're moving. If we go really fast, time slows down. For example, Astronauts in space age a tiny bit more slowly than people on Earth. This is important for things like GPS, which would be incorrect without special adjustments because of how time is affected. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.